Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday evening. I hope it's sunny and beautiful where you are. Well, today we have a wonderful show, ladies and gentlemen. We have this beautiful young lady who is all the way from Trinidad. She's from San Juan, uh, Trinidad. She is an illustrious singer. She has been singing actually in films for many years, and her origin started from the gospel. We'll be talking to the lovely Cassandra Dayson on the Sherrod Show this evening on our special topic entitled, Making the Most Out of That One Opportunity. The Sherrod Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you can listen to the greatest episodes of your life uh, on the Sherrod Show. Just uh, add iHeartRadio to your Roku, or you can add it to your smart device, and you can listen to the best episodes of your life. It's also brought to you by my network, Essence Television, where you can be able to watch this uh, this episode live on Essence Television, and then you can also watch it on Playback. Just watch it on your television, add Roku to it, and you can look on your monitor, and you can be able to watch this episode as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's often, um, not often I have such beautiful and talented uh, individuals on my show as tonight on the show. This lady has been um, performing since she's very young, years, very young, and she's um, also released albums. She is a gospel and God-fearing young lady, and she's here to talk about her career as well as her new single that's coming out. I'm so excited to have her on the show, the wonderful and lovely Cassandra Day said, welcome to the show. How are you this evening, young lady? Thank you for having me. I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing okay. Thanks for asking. You know, uh, Cassandra, just listening to your sound, um, it is very refreshing and very upbeat and positive. Now, let's talk about a little bit about your start in the um, industry. What was your inspiration at such a little age as six years old? Uh, definitely, from a cultural perspective, it was, I grew up in a, in a West Indian home, right? So, my mother was of a, of a Hindu background. Although we were Christian, she was she was born and raised in a Hindu family. So on Sundays, it would be a mix of country music, such as like Jim Reeves and Charlie Pride. And then later on, if she felt like it, she'd throw on the traditional Hindu records, right? So as a child, I was really immersed in a wide variety of music. And she took note that I was harmonizing on key with the Hindi records, especially. And, you know, if you've ever listened to Hindu music, it's actually really challenging to sing to, you know? So when we left Trinidad and we immigrated to Montreal, Quebec in Canada, I was six when we, when we left for Montreal and, you know, started school and my music teacher called my mom to let my mom know that you may want to put this child into some formal music training because in her words, she said I was gifted. Um, because my ear was so attuned, I didn't know how to sight read at that point, but note for note, like I would just memorize whatever I was hearing and just reproduce it, whether vocally or whether with the recorder, that was the first instrument I learned was the recorder. And, um, from there on, my mom made the effort. She was a single mom. Uh, she worked two and three jobs to put me through, you know, music classes and between that between church services, you know, I played bell choir, I was in, you know, the pageants in church. Um, as I got older, I, I became an instrumentist. Um, I trained as a classical clarinetist actually from really young age. So um, I approach music from many fronts. So even as a gospel singer, I grew into that, you know, being in church choirs, but I always approach music from, from much, multiple fronts, right? As a musician and then as a singer, um, so it really complemented my skills as I grew as an artist later in life. But those formative years were, they were my foundation. So that's really where it started. So when, when you started um, and you got the inspiration of backing from your mom, as well as from um, your, your teacher, um, where did it take you from there? When was your first performance? Did you have a recital that you did and you just blew it off the roof and then all of a sudden the bug really hit you? What happened after you, um, when you got your first start in music? So I think from recollection, it was that there was church pageant. So I remember this one pageant in particular, it was called We Like Sheep. And um, I got a solo in it. I was maybe 10 years old and I, it's not like I got the bug to be a soloist, but I just really was like, oh, this is nice. Like I got a little solo and I was feeling myself and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. But really what, what made me become passionate about music was my high school years. 
I was in three jazz bands. I was in two string orchestras. I was in two choirs. Like I was immersed in music. Other than my books, my time was completely spent in music. So then when I graduated from high school, I graduated with honors in music. I think my score average was 99% in music. Um, so then I graduated with a bursary into college. And my first idea was that I was gonna become an orchestra player. I wanted to tour the world and be in either the Montreal Symphony Orchestra or some prestigious orchestra. That was the long-term goal. And then I, by some would say by chance, but others would say by God's design, however you wanna see this. Um, I was singing with a choir that ended up getting contracted to produce back vocals um, for the Cirque du Soleil. And I was 18 years old at that time. And if you know Cirque du Soleil, they are the most prominent circus, like act, circus act in the world. And they were founded in Montreal. So um, we were selected by voice. Not everybody in the choir was able to participate. So just a few of us were hand selected. So I, my vocals are on the first three albums of Cirque du Soleil, um, Salt of Mexico, Mystère, and Alegria. So I saw the world of music from a completely different vantage point, from a professional vantage point, being in the studio, you know, laying down multiple layers of vocals, uh, performing live. Uh, we, we closed the, Mont the Montreal Jazz Festival in 1995, and it was one of the most like amazing moments of my life because imagine this scene where you literally have two to 300,000 people lining the streets. And we were a hundred performers on stage between orchestra, between vocalists, between acrobatics. And it was a show to remember with fireworks, the whole nine yards. So Did you I, say two or uh, 300,000 people? Thousand. Yeah. It, 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 there's still like newspaper clippings of that day. And it, it's never been reproduced since like that major kind of crowd. And it really brought a whole city together. And, um, it's just one of those performances that it stays with you. So for me, I got to experience that at a really young age. So that really was what fed me into this whole life of music because I'm like, wow, if this if this is the power of music, I want to be doing this. So wow. and you were only 18 yeah. years old. Now, um, years old. again, for those who are just joining us, we are speaking to the the singing sensational, wonderful Cassandra Dayson. She is um, actually born and raised in San Juan, Trinidad, but also she lived to, in Montreal, where she actually was raised. Um, so living in Montreal, that's mainly a French uh, speaking country. Is that another language you speak is French? So yeah, so uh, the province, it's a bilingual province. So the first language is French. So I am fluently, you know, bilingual. Um, so what's, what's great about Montreal is it's so multicultural. You have 80 nations living there. So you can imagine in terms of musical flavor, it is one of the most premier musical destinations on the planet. It has the most number of festivals in the world. It has some of the most prestigious festivals in the world. So summers in Montreal are hot. Like, you know, is it, is it one big party in Montreal? Literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally between formula one and the festivals yeah the city doesn't really sleep you know um but i was i i became a vocalist um for a lot of world artists that were coming in through the festivals so you know a lot of times you know you don't want to bring your full entire band right so you know through connections i would you know be asked to perform for some major artists and learn completely different languages like bambara or you know South African, so to be able to sing the lyrics properly. So you know, as as a vocalist, I not only had to be good with my pitch, but I had to be able to absorb new languages and be able to sing it with confidence, so that the artist felt supported. So you know, singing is not just one dimensional for me. It's it's I, I look at it as a really holistic thing where I'm I'm learning someone's culture at the same time as I'm learning someone's music as a vocalist, right? So that. The, you know, those experiences really um, helped me to become a good soloist. That's what really gave me the basis to become a strong soloist and to actually venture out eventually, because for a long time I was hiding behind all these big names, you know, because it was safe. And I just thought that, you know, oh, I'm happy being a vocalist, you know, I'm having a good time. But 
I realized that God was trying to tell me that, you know what, I'm preparing you, I'm grooming you for your season, you know? Um, and so in 2007, I started writing, I started songwriting and a lot of stuff came out, you know, whether it was about my life, whether it was about how I perceived the world, how I felt the world was, was, was hurting, hoping, healing, like very empathic view in terms of songwriting. And that was the culmination of my first album called World. What were you going through back then in 2007 that would, Mm -hmm. um, that would set a trend to what was, so what the world was going through. Let me ask you that question. What was the world going through that you were writing back, if you can remember? So in 2007, I had actually, in that time, I had gotten married in 2001, pretty young, and then I got divorced in 2006. So, you know, you, talking about relationships, you know, I lived that whole process of, you know, getting married, loving somebody, falling out of love and, and having that broken. And um, so that was definitely something I wrote about. I also wrote about the reason I called it Road to Rebellion was that I was I was changing and I saw the world changing at the same time, you know, whether it was technology, whether it was, um, you know, um, just tensions in certain countries, um, my personal transition as a woman, you know, all of these things were happening at the same time. And I, there's a song called Change on the album. And I, I don't know exactly what like set that particular song off, but I just realized that our, our world is just so fleeting and it just takes one person to really begin to make a difference. Like most of us are trained that we, we, we want, we, we're afraid to make change. We're afraid to, to, to take on new things in our life. We're afraid to kind of go off the beaten path you know, and I realized that some people are destined to do that. God has intended some people to not stay within the fold that he needs you to go out and into the world itself in order. And and you're that person. I realized that I was that person. I didn't think that was my mission at all. And, And I think I was fighting it for a long time. And then I came to terms with it, you know? Um, so the interesting thing about it is that, um, You know, you were speaking about how you were trained in music and how you were trained right, the right way in music. You took music lessons and, you know, you were taught and and around a lot of big names. Um, When you look at music and how it's done today, uh, Cassandra, is it something that makes you cringe or is it just the signs of the times? On one hand, I... I'll be real. So on one hand, I look at it as I worry about the art of music. I worry about people being creative with music. So I understand the trend of, you know, sampling and, you know, taking old music and making it fresh and making it new because of a new generation and how they consume music. I understand where we are, right? I'm I'm very cognizant of that. However, I, I also love to see artists and a lot of them don't necessarily get recognized, right? Cause they're not charting at the, at the top of billboard, but they are still approaching music from a, a they're trying to, to, to build something new or to, to really be original. And they're not afraid to be themselves in their music. And that's what I would love to see highlighted a lot more, you know, on the charts. And I think it's always been a struggle of like, what's, what's, what's popular, but I believed in the past that, the freshness of music, the innovation of music, I think that's the right word, is what I would like to see more celebrated. Um, however, the, the positive of technology is that artists like myself, we have access to all the platforms. We have IG, we have YouTube. So, you know, music is just a lot more accessible now so that we can promote ourselves and not necessarily have to be behind a label. So we're not financially constrained as we would have been before. So that's how we need to also utilize the bad it it could also be used as a good to leverage for ourselves but you know it's it's there's many ways of looking at it that's how i would say and it's a good way to get cut down on getting ripped off when you can be able to promote yourself independently um and then it also helps as you were mentioning for very talented people to be seen even though a record label may not have picked them up 
Uh, we will be taking your questions momentarily as we're we'll talking to the wonderful and uh, very talented Cassandra Dayson on the Sherrod Show entitled uh, Making the Most Out of That One Opportunity. Speaking of opportunities, Cassandra, how were you able to make the most out of your first opportunity that was presented to you? And did you know it was an opportunity when it was presented? Yes. So the opportunity in question was, I was in another choir. There was this movie called um, The Wonderful Movie of Disney, but it was based on a television show, a very well-known television show. Um, I think it's called Family Ties. Forgive me, I'm dating myself here. But- um, That's with, what it was, Family Ties, that was correct. It was, right? Michael so, J. Fox. It, it, not Michael J. Fox, it was, um, it was the other one with uh, Cameron. Um, oh, you talk about um, um, not family matters. Um, no, not family matters. Yeah, so very with Alan Thick was the dad. Mm -hmm. I know which one you talk about. It kind of means. Yeah, just like it escapes me. It, I'm telling you, this was a while ago. So we, our choir was split up in groups of five. So we were competing against each other because um, the film producer was like, okay, I need a, I need a quintet to sing in this scene live on this balcony. So the choir was competing against each other. So I was in a group of, of you know, five strongest singers in the choir, I would say. So we beat everybody, right? So we went, we went to film, you know, did the scene, realized, um, then what happened was that we got noticed that, oh, well, we're paid because we actually performed lines which meant that we we got access to union, right? And in Canada was ACTRA, the equivalent of SAG. So I don't know if anybody else in that quintet realized what gem that was, but I immediately understood. And I immediately applied for my union card and got my apprentice card. And from there, I started acting in more movies. Like I, there was, I, and you know what? I've never seen a movie I've been in, but- um, Why I, is that? You, you've never watched a movie you've been in? Not one. Not one. Uh, may Not I one. ask why? You know, I don't have an answer. I think it's just at that at that point in time, I was just all business. I was like, let's just do, let me do my work. Let me get my check, move on to the next, you know, piece of business. I was very, let's go, let's go. I was just focused. Now, <laughs> now I'm like, I just have other things happening. So I'm just, I was just never really interested in watching myself. I was always more like, let's, let me do my job. Let me do the best that I can. And let's just move on. You know? Um, now, now my question to you, Cassandra is um, now when it comes to the opportunities like this, because a lot of the things you've experienced were really like once in a lifetime opportunities when you um, circus LA and um, being able to back big time singers and artists um, as a background singer, and then becoming a professional artist yourself. Now, how are you, how are young people um, able to take advantage of the things that you've taken advantage of? Do you see a lot of them doing that? Or do you see a lot of them blowing opportunities that were afforded to you that could be afforded to them? I think part of it is um, lack, of, lack of knowledge. So let's, you know, as a musician or as a singer, not everybody understands what's available to them. Right. So how many of how many people understand there's a union that, you know, that runs production of a movie like they don't understand the intricacies of their craft. Right. So they understand that, OK, the the surface level, which is, oh, I want to get a record deal or I need a manager or I need, you know, X, Y, Z. But I was always the person who liked to understand the operations, the behind the scenes of something. And that's what I would encourage people to do is to really ask questions as to how are things done? How is a show produced? Because oftentimes it's the people behind the camera that have the power, you know, that can connect you with opportunities. Every time I was on set, I made sure I was polite. I made sure I treated people kindly so that when people looked at me, even if I had a walk on role, that I treated it seriously, that I took it seriously and they paid attention. You know, I was always well-kept, well-dressed, well-mannered, well-spoken. So that was my, that was, I am my business card, right? So people need to be on 24 seven because you really don't know who's watching you. And that is correct. Who are watching me. That you know? is so correct. And then opportunities may only come once in your lifetime, which if you take advantage of it, it can lead to other opportunities. But if you blow it, that may be it, period. Absolutely. 
in terms of that. So now, um, where do you consider yourself, uh, Cassandra? Do you consider yourself an Islander from Trinidad, or do you consider yourself a Canadian? Oof. I'm a Trini Canadian because I am very proud of where I'm from. I may not have the accent until I get home, um, but most of my family is from Trinidad. They are still there. I am extremely connected to them. My husband is also a Trini, um, my stepson as well. So my ties to my homeland are very, very strong, right? So having said that, I am extremely grateful that my mother sacrificed and had a dream. Literally, she had a dream to come to Canada and, and bring me with her on the adventure of our lifetime. Because honestly, would I have been to exposed to these opportunities if I had never left Trinidad? Highly doubtful, highly doubtful. Um, you know what I mean? So I love Canada. I rep Canada hard, you know, um, because I understand that it really gave me a lot of the opportunities that I've been able to, to maximize. And I'm proud of being Canadian too. You know, it, I, I love both and I will proudly rep both till the day I die. Now, you know, when, um, when you're in the music industry, a lot of times um, you have to do a lot of things that, you know, can help further your career. A lot of people sell themselves out um, for the buck, but it seems like you didn't because you transitioned into doing things that you love and you're still singing songs for Jesus. Is that correct? So, you know what I mean? So selling out is interesting. So I've performed in every, almost every venue you can think of. Like I've, I rarely did the bars, but you know what I mean? I, I've done, I performed in, you know, large amphitheaters and all that stuff where maybe people from the church would question, well, why is she not singing in the church? Because I don't really sing in the church anymore, you know? And again, my answer is that not everybody is called to do the work that you are doing. I've been called to reach people in, in my way outside of the church. So even if, you know, my lyrics are, are, how would I say, if you are smart in terms of how you look at my lyrics, you will understand where God is moving in every song. There's not one song that God isn't present in, that there isn't a message for you in, right? So I would not say that I'm gonna wear the mantle of being a gospel singer, that's not me. But I will, I will stake my claim and say that God can work through and is moving through me to, to touch somebody else. How he does it is, is his domain. I don't question, I just obey, you know? Very good, very good. And, and that's the thing, people have to understand God has different tools for different purposes. You just allow yourself to be used. Um, just because you can build a church, that doesn't mean that all you have to do is build churches. You can build homes and houses to help other people as well. Um, and I really appreciate um, you sharing that, you know, with us as well. Now, one thing you were mentioning, I really liked um, before we went on air is the, um, your, your song, your single that really, is it called Be Still? Is that correct? It is called Be Still. And, and that is a um, single that is um, speaking to the times. Tell us a little bit about your inspiration behind it. Wow. So that song um, was written actually a couple of years ago. So I pulled it from the vault because as we went through this pandemic and we're still going through this pandemic and the, the, the protest and, you know, social, you know, racial justice, socioeconomic inequalities, you know, everything is like converging in at one period of time. And literally the pandemic forced the entire world to be still. And literally, you know, we can't go anywhere. We can't see our loved ones. Um, and, you know, it, it really opened our eyes to the reality of our world that was happening around us that for so long, a lot of us had blinders, whether it was purposely or whether it was just because life was getting in the way. And I realized that this song was written it was like almost prophetic in, 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 in the way that it was given to me. And I, and I just pushed it to the side because I knew that at the time I had written it, it wasn't time to perform it. It wasn't time to bring it to light. So looking back at the lyrics, I'm like, dear Lord, like it is everything that 2020 and 2021 is, you know? And I realized that, okay, now is the time to bring this song to light. And now is the time to also share the message that there is still hope there is still goodness. There is still God in spite of all of this. So people need to know that people need to know that because there's so many people rightfully so who've lost 
a lot of hope and gotten very discouraged. So when you come along like that, that is great to give people such inspiration. Are you up for giving us a snippet of it a little later on the show? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure fans would love to hear a live version of it, especially coming from the sultry voice of Cassandra Dacent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take your questions um, now because our audience members have questions. They're burning up to ask you, Cassandra, okay. tonight on the Sherrod Show. And this was, first question is from Philip. This is from Philip from Miami, Florida. He said, uh, where, first of all, first of all, he says, congratulations. Um, he's heard your music on YouTube and many other places and absolutely love it. And it's great that you're inspiring others with your Be Still song. His question is, how have you been able to maintain your integrity in your long in your longevity of your career? Well, hi, Philip. Um, integrity is something that it's one of my values. So I hope everyone has core values. And for me, I have core values. And family is one, and integrity is another. And for me, it is really important to be. When they say, you know, be authentic, integrity is, a, is, a, is like a core component of that. So I cannot come and talk to you or talk to anybody, whether it be through my voice or, or through my words, if I am not secure within myself and I am not, um, I'm not well grounded. So for me, integrity is, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like putting on my clothes every day. It's a must, like, it's just part of who I am. I, I, if I am not someone of integrity and of truth, then I'm doing myself a disservice and I'm worse off, I'm doing a disservice to anyone who is consuming what I'm offering through my music. So I'm tainting it and that's not what I want. Beautiful, thank you for that response and thank you, uh, Philip, for your question. Uh, this question is from Amanda. She is from San Antonio. She says, you're so beautiful and it seems like you have a voice that's um, of magic. And she said, thank you, Gerard, for asking her to sing a, a snippet of uh, Be Still. <laughs> yes, I'm working that out of her. Her question <laughs> is, where in history would you like to be remembered? In other words, would you like to be remembered as a Billie Holiday, for example, um, Aretha Franklin, Young, wh where would you like to be known in history some 50 years down the road? Very good question. Very good question, Amanda. Um, I want to be known as someone who helped, especially, you know, Black, Brown communities that were no longer being the first of anything. Like, I, I want us to really be where it's just normal that we are everywhere. We're not the first astronaut. We're not the first, you know, biochemist. We're not the first, you know, um, EGOT winner. Like, I, I'm, I don't want us to be first anymore. And I just want to really and hopefully be remembered as someone who advanced our cause, advanced our, our place in society to a point where we, we are celebrated not because of our color per se, but just because we are who we are. So, you know, if I'm ever given awards, like Grammy or whatever that case may be, I, I, it's, it's, it's beyond me. So I want that to stand really clear that it's, it's way, way beyond me. It's not about me at, at the end of the day. Very good. We appreciate your question, Amanda. Very good question. And we'll have time for one last question. This is from Jacob and is from Jacob from Kansas City, Missouri. He said, I'm a big fan. Love what you do. His question is, with your song, it's a two-part question, with your song, Be Still, is that an anthem like Curtis Mayfield's anthems and Marvin Gaye's anthem, What's Going On? Um, or is it one that you're just you're in, inspired to be able to move mountains? Very good question. That's question. Very good question. I think it's the former. I think it actually is a song that can incite incite change where you really you're really it's 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 anthemic it really is be still and no and you would think it's like well you'd want to shout it from the rooftops but sometimes silence is really where you where you gain clarity and you gain strength and you gain your answers and you gain direction so I wanted to take a completely different approach in terms of what a solution could be kind of like Martin Luther King, you know, you know, you can, you can still exude power and presence in silence, you know, um, and also to be, to, to be conscious that, again, I'm coming from a spiritual perspective that in, in meditation, in prayer, 
when you are really centered on God or whoever you pray to, a lot of revelations come through, but you need to be still. Amen. Very good. And, and Jacob's last question to you is what is your favorite genre of music? I mean, what era are you are you in love with now? Um, the 2000s, the 90s, or you love the Supremes in the 60s, 70s? What is your favorite era of music? I love it. Oh, man, that's a hard, that's a hard question. Um, I think I'm, I'm of like the old school, like Mary J. Blige era, and she's still present, right? She's not done. But I'm, I'm, I'm of the Jill Scotts and the, you know, the big singers, beautiful voices, like, you know, uh, the talents that, you know, they have their, they, they've reached a stature, but I wish like they were all the way recognized, you know? Um, so yeah, I would think those major singers, like, you know, the Mariah Carey's and, and of course, um, you know, Christina Aguirre, like, I mean, real singers, like anyone is a real singer where you can just give them a mic, no music and they can go. I can sit there all day and listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And I'm telling you, Dan, you can really sell me when you're singing in front of a live band as well. When you can sing in front of a live band, I'm absolutely. Thrilled. We thank you all for your questions. Um, definitely, you can hit us up at Essence Television on your email. Um, check our email address. It's essencetelevision at gmail.com. But also, if we have any questions for you, if there are further questions for you, Cassandra, where can they hit you up at? On your social media links, et cetera. Yeah, so the best place to find me is to check out my website. It's www.cassandradason.com. And from there, you can easily find my social media links, my Instagram and my Twitter. It's at Cassandra Dason. And on Facebook, it's at Cassandra Dason MM. So I'm really easy to find. And ladies and gentlemen, look at your monitor. Her uh, website information is there. It is so impressive. She has such a beautiful uh, website. I just love it. And there's so much information about her bio and her history and where she's come from. Definitely check it out. I'm a huge fan and supporter. And I just met her tonight, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, uh, Cassandra, you're not getting off the hook. Um, <laughs> you like a 20 second uh, tidbit or 30 second of the beautiful song, Be Still, because your fans are looking to be inspired tonight. Okay, all right. So I'll just sing a little bit of the chorus. So be still and know I'm here today. Your pain is mine to take away. Rejoice and be still. Anyway, um, that's all I'm giving. We thank you. We thank you. Cassandra, where can they purchase this? Or when is it coming out? So it's coming out June 15th. It will be available on all major platforms like Amazon and Spotify and Apple. So visit my website and my, you know, Instagram and Twitter so you can stay up to date with all the happenings because there's also going to be a video that I'm filming on May 10th to support the song. And it's going to be beautiful. I oh, wow. well, well, at least have me play the butler in a video. I just played a butler. <laughs> Cassandra, <laughs> we thank you so much for being on the Sherrod Show. We're so humbled and honored that you're here and you supported uh, being on the Sherrod Show. We wish you the most success. We hope and pray that when the pandemic is over, you'll be touring out here in Southern California, will you? I hope so. I really do. We appreciate that so much, ladies and gentlemen. And also make sure to subscribe to our newsletter, um, the Essence Television newsletter. The information is on your screen, as well as uh, my non-for-profit, um, Fighting for the Cure Against Lupus and auto, also other autoimmune diseases. Um, there is a solution out there. Donate. And we were looking for those. Um, I'm also going to come into a city near you to speak about lupus and things like that to help people to learn how to avoid and educate themselves on it as well. In the meantime, stay tuned for our next episode of The Sherrard Show. We have a huge Hollywood star that's stopping by. That's going to have me laughing so much. You just got to tune in to see it. In the meantime, have a good night. Bye-bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrard Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherradshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at essencetelevisionnetworks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrard, you can email him at thesherradshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. <laughs>